the CERN Collider, how antimatter, portals, may open the bottomless pit. The CERN Collider poses as a massive science experiment, exploring the nature of matter and energy. However, another express purpose of the experiment is to open portals into other dimensions and bring what is out there in those dimensions here to the earth. A statue of the Indian deity Shiva, their god of destruction, is prominently displayed on the CERN grounds, dancing through a circle which appears to be a portal, although no one at CERN will admit it. Is this experiment really more occult ceremony than science? In fact, is much of science that we now have in the world closer to occult practices than ever before? That's what we're talking about today, and we're starting right now. Of course, this has massive prophetic implications. Satan and his demons are cast out of heaven onto the earth in Revelation 12. And in Revelation 9, the bottomless pit is opened and demonic locust-like creatures invade the earth. Today, we're going to investigate the possible biblical connections to CERN as well. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, better known as CERN, has built a 17-mile circle in Switzerland known as a Large Haldron Collider. It's the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Yes, that means there are more of these worldwide, but this is by far the biggest. CERN is also the inventor of the internet. Did you know that? In 1989, Tim Berners-Lee a British scientist at CERN invented the World Wide Web, you know, www that's in front of most web addresses. The web was originally conceived and developed to meet the demand for automatic real-time information sharing between scientists around the world. Now, the accelerator is an underground ring of superconducting magnets with a number of accelerating structures there to boost the energy of the particles. Inside the accelerator, two high energy particle beams travel at close to the speed of light and then they collide. These collisions result in the atoms being broken up into their constituent parts. In 1995, the accelerator even produced limited quantities of antimatter and also something called the God particle, or technically the Higgs boson particle. Astrophysical observers have demonstrated that visible physical matter, you know, what we can see, only accounts for 4% of the universe. The rest is dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter is what scientists think might be part of the glue that holds everything together. Now, there are two problems with this experiment of trying to create this stuff. First, Jesus is what holds everything together. And unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like they're moving in the direction of finding him through their experiments. Here's what Colossians has to say about this. He, meaning Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Yes, in him all things hold together. Jesus is the glue that holds everything together. Did you notice this passage not only speaks of Jesus holding all things together, but also being the creator of both the visible and the invisible, just like we were talking about. And it links the invisible with thrones, dominions, rulers, and authorities. These are the same forces of wickedness that Paul tells us are in heavenly places. So spiritually, trying to produce this antimatter may have horrible effects. It might not, 
but it could. But even on a non-spiritual, physical basis, no one has any idea what the consequences will be if the goals of CERN's experiment are achieved. What will be the interactions of light matter and dark matter? No one knows. What other effects might it have on Earth's gravity, power grids, earthquakes, etc.? It is a completely unknown area of study. For instance, in 2015, CERN even admitted it had tried to create tiny black holes. CERN insists its research, including black holes, is perfectly safe. But, you know, world-renowned scientists and theorists believe it could have caused the collapse of the entire universe. However, this video is strictly spiritual in nature, and we aren't going to comment on the wisdom or safety of the experiments because we aren't astrophysicists. We aren't experts, but we are experts in spiritual aspects. And given that, let's start with the statue of Shiva, the destroyer that stands on the CERN grounds. Although most corporations you know, tend to try to avoid connection with religion and the spiritual world, CERN has chosen to prominently place this Hindu god on its property. But you know, it's not just any Hindu god. Shiva is the ancient god of destruction and then recreation. Shiva is the Hindu version of Apollo, or as the Bible calls him, Apollo Yan. Yes, he is the king of the bottomless pit. CERN's official written explanation of why Shiva is present is as follows. We should allow them to explain themselves. Quote, the Shiva statue was a gift from India to celebrate its association with CERN, which started in the 1960s and remains strong today. In the Hindu religion, Lord Shiva, notice they call him Lord, practiced Naharaj dance, which symbolizes Shakti or life force. This deity was chosen by the Indian government because of a metaphor that was drawn between the cosmic dance of a Naharaj and the modern study of the, quote, cosmic dance of subatomic particles. So, you're probably wondering, as I was, what is this Naharaja dance? The two most common forms of Shiva's dance are the gentle form of the dance, the Lajya, associated with the creation of the world, and the Tandava, the vigorous form of the dance associated with destruction of the world. Shiva destroys in order to recreate, tearing down to build again, all according to Hindu traditions. Followers of this channel know that these pagan gods like Shiva are likely avatars for fallen angels. In this previous video, we discussed this and how the gods of the Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, Sumerians, etc. are likely the same fallen angels, appearing as different avatars to be culturally relevant in each culture. A link to that other video is down in the description if you want to watch it after this one is through because it's related. But the takeaway for us is that Shiva is a fallen angel, likely one of the powers and principalities mentioned by Paul. It is interesting then that the fallen angel's avatar <laughs> appears at CERN. If you noticed, he dances within a circular arch of flames, which in Hindu tradition represents the cosmic fire that creates everything and consumes everything. Again, that's Shiva's nature. The fire represents evils, dangers, and the heat of life. The arch of fire emerges from two makara, or mystical water beasts, one at each end. Makara are considered guardians of gateways and thresholds. Did you notice that? Now, our channel finds it quite interesting, as the flaming arch appears like Shiva's coming through a portal or some kind of supernatural gateway. So the image of the statue and these makara fit perfectly with this theory. And one of CERN's stated purposes is to open a portal to other dimensions. The mathematical theory called string theory proposes 26 dimensions beyond the known four, you know, height, width, depth, time. Now I know it sounds like science fiction, but this is real. Wait till you hear this statement by one of CERN's own, their director, of research and scientific computing, Sergio Bertolucci. He
He grabbed headlines when he told a British tabloid the Collider could actually open otherworldly portals to another dimension for, quote, a very tiny lapse of time, unquote. Merely fractions of a second, however, that may be just enough time. Quote, to peer into this open door, either by getting something out of it or sending something into it. It would be a major leap in our vision of nature. And of course, there would be no risk to the stability of our world. End of quote. Really, Sergio? <laughs> no risk? Now, understandably, this comment triggered fears of that CERN and the CERN Collider could unwittingly invite unwanted visitors from other time-space dimensions. This is exactly what is pictured, by the way, in the Shiva statue. He seems to be stepping through a portal into this world. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Shiva is another avatar for the Greek god Apollo or Apollyon mentioned in Revelation 9. Let's take a look at that passage right now. They have a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, he is called Apollyon. Notice this fallen angel has two names in this verse. These names are for the same being, except they're in different languages and different cultures. And likely this is the same being as Shiva. Just, again, different names and appearance. CERN has the angel of the bottomless pit statue on their premises. You're probably aware of a video that circulated online that seems to show a ritualistic human sacrifice taking place in front of that statue at night. The video shows several people dressed in black cloaks gathering in, around the statue in what seems to be you know, some kind of occult ceremony. The video then seems to include the stabbing of a woman who willingly submits to being sacrificed. The video was filmed from an upstairs window above the uh, statue, and when the stabbing takes place, the person filming lets out a string of expletives and runs away with the camera still running. Now, was it real or a hoax? Here's what CERN has to say about it. These scenes were filmed on our premises, so they admit it. Without official permission or knowledge, CERN does not condone this type of spoof which can give rise to misunderstandings about the scientific nature of our work. This spokeswoman also mentioned that those involved had access badges to the premises. They were either guests of CERN or employees. Now, in my opinion, given that the woman in the video willingly submits to being sacrificed, this is almost assuredly a hoax on Christians who have criticized the statue of a fallen angel on the premises of CERN. Now, what CERN personnel miss, however, is that even their scientific efforts are occultic in nature. They're like an occultic rite. Summoning fallen angels and demons from other dimensions is the very nature of occult practices, whatever means are utilized. CERN simply doesn't know what they're dealing with. Now let's look at the rest of Revelation 9's passage about the opening of the bottomless pit. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. In this verse, we see that a fallen star is a he. It is a being of some sort that opens the bottomless pit. A key is given to him. We know Jesus originally holds the keys of death and Hades. We know that in Revelation 1.18. So it's likely that Jesus gives this being, this fallen star, the keys to open the pit. Now, a question many ask is whether this is a good angel, a good fallen star, or a bad one. I think the term fallen would seem to indicate it is a fallen angel. Why would Jesus then do such a thing? This event, the fifth trumpet, is part of the wrath of God. It's God's punishment on the wicked. Now, allowing a fallen angel, who might even be Satan, to participate is not outside the realm of possibility. God used Nebuchadnezzar to bring his wrath upon Jerusalem back in 500 BC, after all. But how does CERN figure into this supernatural opening of the bottomless pit? Revelation clearly says it's the fallen star 
who opens the pit, not CERN. Well, in numerous ways, heavenly forces impact things occurring on earth in Revelation. The fourth horseman is death, after all, not a human, yet he affects events on the earth. So it is entirely possible that this fallen star helps CERN open the pit, or maybe CERN helps the fallen star. Or perhaps CERN opens a portal that is the means by which Satan and his fallen angels come to earth, as in Revelation 12, after they're cast out by Michael the archangel. This happens at the midpoint of the 70th week. Now this may explain why the fallen star or angel is on the earth. He may have come to earth at the midpoint and only opens the bottomless pit later at the fifth trumpet, which is blown during the final year of the 70th week. So exactly how CERN participates, or even if it participates in bringing other spiritual beings to the earth, is still a question. The Bible is obviously not that detailed that it tells us CERN does it. But a science experiment that has the potential to do this is something we need to keep our eyes on. It is another sign of the end times. Now, as we mentioned, Satan is cast out of heaven by Michael the archangel after a war between God's angels and the fallen ones. Click right here to learn more about this titanic struggle and the events on earth that parallel the war in heaven and why it may be the central event in all of Revelation. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.